Museum presents a history of the Navy in 100 objects. Over the last few weeks, we have spent a lot of time discussing the technological innovation that was a hallmark of the U.S. Navy from the War of 1812 to the Civil War. The Civil War was the culmination and testing ground of a variety of technologies still used today that had been under development during the first half of the 18th century. One of those was the submarine, and as we discussed last week, it was during the Civil War that Confederate submarine H.L. Hunley became the first to sink an enemy ship. However, Hunley was not the first submarine deployed in the United States in combat, although she was the first successful one. Today, we pause our chronological narrative of the Navy's history and go back to the American Revolutionary War, to the very first American submarine, the Turtle. Our object today is a series of pay stubs belonging to the Turtle's inventor, David Bushnell. Dr. Jennifer Bryan joins us to discuss these in more detail. These pay stubs help us to understand a brief history, including some of the key people and technologies, that helped shape the future of submarines. A key point to note is that for the first hundred years or so, submarines and naval mines as underwater naval explosives are called, were developed simultaneously. We will discuss mine warfare in a later episode. The American submarine narrative begins with the deployment of David Bushnell's turtle against the British ship HMS Asia, which was blockading the Americans in New York Harbor at the beginning of the Revolutionary War. Although the attempt to use turtle to attach an underwater mine to Asia's hull was ultimately unsuccessful, the mission nevertheless helped validate Bushnell's concept. During the post-Revolutionary War years, Robert Fulton, whose invention of the first steamship Demologos we discussed in an earlier episode, improved upon Bushnell's design and was awarded a contract by Napoleon Bonaparte to build an underwater craft to attack the blockading British ships off of the coast of France during the Napoleonic Wars. In 1800, Fulton completed his prototype, which he called Nautilus. Years later, this craft would inspire Jules Verne's account of the fictional Nautilus in his book 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Fulton's designs helped set the stage for modern submarines by developing such technologies as adjustable diving planes to allow for vertical maneuvering, multiple propulsion systems, and the use of compressed air to allow for underwater operations. Fulton's early model allowed the vessel to stay underwater for roughly four hours. Fulton also successfully developed and demonstrated various types of mines, both surface and subsurface. Many of today's naval mines operate essentially on the principles that Fulton designed in the early years of the 19th century. Additionally, Fulton began developing the first tactics of undersea warfare, and he articulated some of the earliest strategies for waging war underwater in works such as On Submarine Navigation and Attack. Like the later transition from sail to steam, fighting underwater required a whole new set of tactical doctrine that had never been thought of before, although in the case of submarines this doctrine would take much longer to develop and adopt than the transition from sail to steam. Throughout the first half of the 19th century, Engineers and inventors around the world had further successes in submarine design. Although the U.S. had pioneered the use of submarines in combat in the Civil War, it wasn't until the 1870s and 80s that the United States Navy began its submarine fleet construction in earnest. It was at this time that Jules Verne wrote his famous book about the fictional Nautilus that roamed the globe underwater, powered by a revolutionary power source. This foreshadowed the launch of the first nuclear-powered submarine of the same name 
less than a century later. John Holland spearheaded the post-Civil War development of U.S. Navy submarines, and he continued to work on improving his designs into the 20th century. Holland's sixth design was purchased by the U.S. Navy as the USS Holland in 1900. The adoption of diesel engines in American submarines occurred in the early years of the 20th century, and this remained the standard of underwater propulsion until Admiral Rickover developed the nuclear submarine force. In World War II, diesel-powered submarine Nautilus, SS-168, won fame at the Battle of Midway and other Pacific engagements, using a design not all that much different from Holland's early designs, and sharing many of the characteristics with her Verne-inspired namesake. Verne's narrative, however, wouldn't truly become a reality until 1954, with the launch of the first nuclear submarine, SSN-571 Nautilus, under the guiding hand of the father of the U.S. Nuclear Navy, Admiral Rickover. The ability of Nautilus to remain submerged indefinitely allowed her to traverse the globe underwater, which she successfully did, shattering underwater records in the process. With the launch of this new Nautilus, barely a hundred years after Hunley sunk the Housatonic, Verne's vision was realized and the modern nuclear submarine fleet was born. But it all started with Captain David Bushnell, paid by the state of Connecticut for his services in the American Revolutionary War, with a tax of one shilling on the pound, and his hand-powered turtle. We now go to Dr. Bryan. And we're in Special Collections and Archives today to look at six pay certificates issued to David Bushnell and also his autograph on a document indicating that he received these certificates. Bushnell was the inventor of the turtle submarine, so-called because it resembled a tortoise in its shape. It looked like the two shells were put together. Bushnell was a native of Connecticut and a graduate of Yale University, and he is credited with constructing the first practical, functioning underwater vessel that met the criteria for a modern submarine. He graduated in 1775, and of course the Revolution, Revolutionary War had broken out at that point with the battles at Lexington and Concord in April. And Bushnell not only developed a submarine, but also worked on developing underwater explosives. So during the spring and summer of 1775, he was working on constructing his turtle, which was made out of wood. And the purpose of the turtle was to deliver a powder magazine that could destroy a ship. A wood screw would be fastened to the hull of the ship with a rope connecting the magazine to the screw. And the magazine contained a timing mechanism that sprung a lock that fired the powder. The turtle's first action was against the British fleet at New York in September 1776. The attempt failed because the submarine's operator could not attach the wood screw. It, he couldn't get the auger to go through a metal band that surrounded the ship. But he did detonate the mine before being rescued by the Americans, proving that the submarine and the mine both worked. The turtle made two other attacks on British ships anchored off Fort Lee, New Jersey, but in both instances, the submarine was spotted by alert seamen. After the lack of success of the turtle, Bushnell concentrated on naval mines. He designed a mine that exploded on contact using a spring lock device as a detonator. The mines were suspended below kegs that were tied together and then set afloat. In December 1777, the mines were sent down the Delaware River toward British ships anchored near Philadelphia. The mines failed to reach their intended targets, but they did explode, so frightening the British that they fired at any target that they saw in the river. The encounter was immortalized by the American Revolutionary War poet Francis Hopkinson in The Battle of the Kegs. <laughs> 